Hey guys, so in our last lessons we were looking at physical properties of certain molecules and looking at intermolecular forces. So remember that was dipole-dipole, dispersion and hydrogen bonding. So now we'll be looking at properties of water and how hydrogen bonding and all these other types of intermolecular forces are going to affect and give us certain specific properties of water that other molecules similar to it doesn't have. So attractive forces between molecules are those like hydrogen bonds between the O and the H. Um, they're not chemical bonds, so that means they're not inside the molecule, they're intermolecular. So between bonds and they include one of the three, hydrogen bonds, dispersion forces and dipole-dipole. So we will be looking at hydrogen bonding today. Um, it's a specific type of dipole-dipole interaction. Uh, so a dipole-dipole force is between a hydrogen atom bound to a small, highly electronegative atom with lone pairs. So we know that hydrogen here is bound to a highly electronegative oxygen. Oxygen is going to pull the electrons closer to it compared to the hydrogen. So slight negative charge here, slight positive charge here. Uh, but also we know that oxygen has two sets of lone pairs here and here. This means it's going to be no negative along here, but also negative because of its electronegativity. Nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine strongly withdraw electron density, so that means it's highly electronegative from the hydrogen. And these bonds are very polar, and hydrogen becomes slightly partially positive, while the oxygen or the nitrogen and fluorine are slightly negative. So partially positive hydrogen uh, of one of the molecules is attracted to a partially negative side of another molecule or a lone pair. Lone pairs are found in the nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine um, of another, atom, another molecule. So here we can show that hydrogen here is positive and the ne uh, nitrogen here is negative. Nitrogen is slightly negative already being electronegative but also it has the lone pairs. So the hydrogen can then be attracted towards the slightly negative nitrogen but also the lone pair. Uh, this is called a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bond is a dipole-dipole bond, but it also is involving a lone pair of electrons. So small sizes of nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine are vital to the hydrogen bond. So we really need these ones. Uh, they allow atoms to be strongly electronegative, uh, and that means it will be highly positive on the hydrogen side and highly negative on the uh, nitrogen, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. So highly positive here, highly negative here. So the lone pair on, on these atoms come closer to the hydrogen. So the hydrogen here can start to move towards the lone pairs here and here. So hydrogen bonding uh, involves electronegative atoms, but not all of them. So chlorine, bromine, sulfur do not form uh, hydrogen bonds, even though they're highly electronegative. We know that there's highly electronegative and there's going to be slight negative charge here compared to here. But in these cases, even though the, ponds are, the bonds are polar, so that means negative, so the arrow is going to be pointing this way, remember? Um, even though it's polar, it's not going to have hydrogen bonding. So the attractive forces between the partially positive hydrogen and the slightly negative uh, chlorine or bromine or sulfur are not as strong because it doesn't have lone pairs. Uh, so these ones, uh, the lone pairs, if they have lone pairs but they're not accessible because it's so big, there's so many electrons involved, a lot of the electrons are sitting too far out and that means they're going to block the way to the, the lone pairs. So they're not accessible to the partially positive hydrogen atoms. So when we have a lot of electrons, if it's a big atom, a lot of electrons in the electron cloud, they're going to block the lone pairs and therefore, therefore the hydrogen cannot come in and bind to them. So in summary, we have uh, essential requirements for hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen atoms bind to strongly electronegative but small electronegative atoms, so nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. Uh, the hydrogen atom becomes slightly positive charged because of the pull of electrons towards the electronegative atoms. And the lone pairs on the nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine of another molecule attracts a partially positive hydrogen atom. So we're going to have a lone pairs around here and they're uh, going to be negatively charged, pulling towards uh, the highly positive hydrogen. So why is it important that we have hydrogen bonding? Firstly, uh, 
the strength of the hydrogen bonds are about 10 times that of a dipole-dipole one. So it's a lot stronger. And then the dipole-dipole ones are even stronger than um, ion, um, than the dispersion forces. So this one, hydrogen bonding is going to be the strongest of them, followed by dipole-dipole, and then followed by dispersion forces. Um, so these hydrogen bonds are about one-tenth of those of ionic or covalent bonds. So covalent bonds, remember, are inside the molecule, so they're very, very strong, and ionic bonds are between a positive and a negatively charged atom. So these ones are the strongest, and then we have hydrogen bonding, about one-tenth of that. So these are extremely important in biological systems. And they play a really important role in the structure of proteins and as well as the structure of DNA. Remember, DNA has a double helix structure. So the DNA molecule consists of two chains, each held together by strong covalent bonds within the chain. But millions and millions upon billions of hydrogen bonds link each chain to each other. So the two chains are actually not bound together by anything. Only the chain itself has covalent bonds. So this has covalent bonds in the blue one and covalent bonds in the purple one. But in between them, there's no covalent bonds. We only have hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bonds are also important in melting and boiling points. Bo boiling and melting points typically rise as we increase the molar mass. And we can see that here in the graphs. So as we increase the molar mass, we're going to have an increase in temperature. So it slightly goes up here and it slightly goes up here. But the first member of each series tends to be very different to the other ones. So here we have water and it doesn't follow the trend. If it follows the trend, it should really sit down here somewhere with the CH4. But in this case it doesn't. It's quite high, even higher than the last one. So this is because water has hydrogen bonds and these bonds keep the molecules together and you need more energy, so more heat to put it into the system to break the hydrogen bonds. Uh, so when we break the hydrogen bonds, then we can say it goes from a solid to a liquid. If we break it even further, it goes from a liquid to a gas. So we have other uh, examples of hydrogen bonds in ethanoic acids. So that's the hydrogen here uh, being attracted to the negative oxygen and similar on the other side if we flip it over. And we also have it in NH and CO bonds. So between here and here. And these tend to be really uh, common in proteins. Uh, the hydrogen bond gives us a lot of specific properties that water has that other molecules don't have. The arrangement of water molecules in ice creates a very open structure. Uh, that means we have a lot of space between the molecules. And that means we get less density per, the, per size. So that's why ice uh, floats on water, because it's less dense than water. When ice melts, the lattice breaks. That means we're going to break these bonds that's holding it into a, a crystal structure. And th the water molecules then can pack closely together. And that means the space here is reduced and becomes a water, a liquid version. Without hydrogen bonding, ice would sink to the bottom of oceans and lakes because we're not going, getting the spaces we need in between. And this will mean the death of a lot of aquatic life. And when it gets to winter, ice won't float to the top and therefore fish can't live below it. In summary, we need to understand that hydrogen bonds are very, very important. They're really strong in all the dis, uh, in compared to dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces but they're not as strong as ionic and covalent bonds. And hydrogen bonds are really important in biological systems, especially in proteins, giving the structure of DNA and things like that. And also gives water specific properties so that ice is less dense than um, liquid because of the spaces in between in the lattice due to hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding also then requires a lot more energy to be put into the system to melt ice or turn water into gas. Now we can look at some questions. Question one, define the term hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular interaction, so between molecules, in which a partially positive hydrogen atom is attracted to the lone pair of a highly electronegative atom, so nitrogen, fluorine, or oxygen, in another molecule. And this forms the hydrogen bond. 
Question two, list two essential requirements for hydrogen bonds. So firstly, a hydrogen bond needs to be bound to uh, a highly electro but small uh, electronegative atom. So nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are the usual ones. But also, they need to have a lone pair for bonding with the hydrogen so that they can attract together. Question three, which of the following um, explanation about hydrogen bonding is incorrect? So in A, hydrogen atoms should be bonded to highly electronegative atoms. Yes, uh, they should be because if not, we won't get that polarity on the bond. C, lone pair electrons from highly electronegative atoms should be available. Yes, we need lone pairs to make it stronger. If long, lone pairs aren't there, we only get dipole dipole ones. DNA base pairing is an example of hydrogen bonding from nature. That's true because the covalent bonds are within the chain and between chains we have a lot of hydrogen bonds. So B, uh, chlorine and sulfur are electronegative and can form hydrogen bonds. They are electronegative and they do form uh, dipoles with the bonds, but because chlorine and sulfur are so big, the, the electron cloud is too big to be uh, accessed um, for the lone pairs. So that means hydrogen can't uh, interact with the lone pairs in these two cases. So in this case, this one is incorrect. Question four. List in order of increasing strength the three types of intermolecular forces which may exist between molecules of covalent molecular substances. So intermolecular forces are those between molecules. And remember that's dispersion forces, that's hydrogen bonding, and that's dipole-dipole. So first, uh, we need to make sure that the increasing strength, so uh, hydrogen bonds are involved, dipole-dipole are involved, and dispersion forces are involved. So this one's the weakest, this one's the strongest. So summary, hydrogen bonding is really, really important. It's, re it's involved in a lot of different uh, processes in nature, so it is involved in holding the double helix structure in DNA, and it's one of the strongest um, intermolecular forces involved, and this gives it uh, water specific properties such as less dense solid compared to liquid.